Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Cairo tutorial series. In this video we will learn about data types. Cairo is a statically typed language, which means that it must know the data types of all variables at compile time. The default data type in Cairo is felt to 52, which can store up to 252 bits and serves as the base for all other data types. The value of fel 252 can be between 0 and a very large prime number. However, if through some mathematical operation, like subtraction, addition or multiplication, the value would fall outside this range, an overflow occurs and an appropriate multiple of the prime number is added or subtracted to bring the value back within range. This is why it's strongly recommended to use more restrictive data types like integers to prevent overflow and other unwanted behaviors in our program. An integer is a number without a fractional component. In the Cairo core library, all integers are unsigned. This means that their values cannot be negative. When using integers, we need to specify the maximum amount of bits that will be stored inside, with U8 being the smallest variant and U256 the biggest. All integer types can fit inside the FEL252, except for U256, which needs 4 more bits to be stored. Under the hood, a U256 is basically a struct consisting of two U128s. Integers can be written in decimal, hex, octal and binary format. If you want to use a number literal, you have to add the integer type as a suffix with an underscore. We can perform all the basic mathematical operations on integers, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and remainder. As there is no fractional component, the result of division will always be rounded down. In this code, we can see how we can use mathematical operations with integers in a let statement. In each case, the value stored inside the variable will be the result of the mathematical operation. If the value were to be below zero, our program will panic with a sub-overflow error. To choose the right integer variant for your variable, think about what the maximum value of that variable will be. We can convert types within Cairo by using one of two methods. The into method converts the value directly, whilst the try into method returns an option with some holding the value or none if the conversion was not successful. To get the value, we can use the unwrap method. In this code, we try to convert a FEL252 into a U8. Since the value held by a FEL252 might be bigger than what can fit inside the U8, we are using the try into method. Because the value 6 fits within a U8, the value can be successfully unwrapped and we can print it. Now let's change the value to 256. If we run our program now, it will panic because 256 does not fit within a U8, so there is nothing to unwrap. When success is guaranteed, like when we convert a smaller type into a bigger one, we can safely use the into method, which returns the value directly without needing to unwrap. The third primary data type in Cairo is Boolean. A Boolean is a data type that can only have two possible values, true or false. Booleans are one felt to 52 in size and annotated with bool. Usually Booleans are used in control flow situations to execute code based on whether some condition is being fulfilled. In Cairo there are no native string types but we can use a short string to store characters inside the FEL252. Because one ASCII character is 8 bits, we can store up to 31 characters in a short string. To create a short string, we can put the value between single quotes. A tuple is a grouping of multiple values together into one compound type. The types of the values inside the tuple don't have to be the same. Tuples have a fixed length, so once declared, we cannot add or remove values from the tuple. To create a tuple, we can use parentheses and separate the values inside by using commas. 
annotating the variables is optional. The value tuple binds to the entire tuple because a tuple is considered a single compound element. To get the individual values from the tuple, we can destructure it. We do this by using the let keyword, followed by parentheses containing the names that we want to give the variables that will contain the values. This program first creates a tuple and binds it to the variable tube. It then uses a pattern with let to take tube and turn it into three separate variables, x, y, and z. Finally, the program prints y is 6 because the value of y is 6. Finally, there is the unit type. The unit type is represented by a tuple with no elements. Its size is always 0 and it will not exist in the compiled code. Thank you for watching.